Several miles south of downtown Boise, you'll find the center of the world when it comes to endangered bird preservation. The World Center for Birds of Prey. You know, it started in the 80s, the peregrine falcons and raptors, but by the early 90s, they turned their attention to the California condor. Condors battled lead poisoning for years, and in more recent years, that extinction endgame has been avoided because of the quick work being done by the World Center of Birds of Prey and other conservation groups. There's a new problem now. A pandemic, so to speak, of bird flu is wiping out California condors. And to stop it, the World Center for Birds of Prey say they need all the help they can get. They told their story to Joe Paris. The California condor can be traced back thousands and thousands of years. The species survived the last ice age, survived narrow extinction in the 80s, and can even be found on official American currency. But now the California condors face a new problem, an emergency situation. Well, we're, we're currently dealing with an outbreak of HPAI, which is uh, avian influenza. Tim Houck is the Condor Program Director for the Peregrine Fund, based in Boise, Idaho. Their mission is to conserve birds of prey around the globe. The California condor is a species the team has worked with for decades. They're trying to save them. Avian flu is the latest battle. So it's been uh, found within our population, and we've since recovered birds that have died from HPAI, and we're currently on the ground trying our best to monitor individuals collect birds that have passed and uh, get them sent off for necropsies so we can find out uh, what the cause of death was. And, you know, most of these have actually come back as, as avian influenza. The team in Boise hosts a California condor breeding program to help restore the population of a species that has been decimated in recent decades. The goal is to get condors back into natural habitats while being observed. A flu outbreak in the Arizona-Utah habitat threatens that work possibly compromising years of conservation. That's one of the difficult parts of, of this, uh, this disease is that there's not a whole lot that you can do once it's spreading within your, within your species. Um, but we can do some things and we're taking action to the best of our ability on the ground in the field. And so one of the things we're doing is we've, we've stopped feeding uh, young birds or managing uh, the population through our, our management site where we often provide proffered food. Uh, so we're going to try to eliminate any possibility of congregation because, you know, just like the flu in humans, uh, we wouldn't want to all sit around a dinner table with our family. If we knew somebody had the flu, we wouldn't want the same for condors. So as much as they can disperse, that's the best thing for them right now. Uh, they're an incredibly social species, so they like to congregate. They feed together. Uh, they roost together. So one of the difficult parts of the biology of the species as it relates to avian influenza. They need support to navigate the emergency effort. A donation page is now set up on the Peregrine Fund's website to help save the condors. We're using funds to try to keep the field team safe. Uh, this is a, a, um, a, a virus that can be potentially uh, harmful to humans in very rare cases. So we want to make sure that we have the appropriate PPE in the field for our, our field crews. Uh, we're also using funds for uh, volunteers on the front lines, travel costs, lodgings, things like that, other equipment that we need to get the work done in the field. Uh, and, and of course, medical treatment for the birds that we're actually able to capture. So all of those things are, are, are paramount right now for the, the success of, of the species and the future of the species. So all boots are on the ground, all, uh, all hands on deck. With that said, work in Boise is as important as ever. The staff up in uh, Boise there at the Peregrine Fund, we have the largest captive breeding flock, which I believe is just over 50 birds. Um, pretty incredible stuff. And those, those birds are going to be so crucial and uh, moving forward through something like this. That genetic stock is extremely important and they're going to help us uh, be able to put more birds out through captive breeding into the wild. Populations of the condors are actually kept separate, separate. So infections appear to just be in the Utah, Arizona population for right now. But Brian, it's uh, it's interesting, and I want to be very clear here that the work done here in Boise, that's really the rehab work. It's not like they do the rehab in Boise and then they just say, okay, go fly across Idaho. The population in the Utah, Arizona area, that's one group, and then there are condors in California. But the idea is to make sure that regionally these populations are kind of isolated so there's not crossover. Right. For example, so that flu would and go from Arizona, Utah to the California group, which right now it looks like it hasn't. Okay, so right now everything's kind of isolated the way it should be.
but it's still a very dire battle. And again, as, as we talked about in the story, they've worked for years and years to bring back this, this yeah. species, and oh, it's know, faced yeah. a lot of problems. And you're saying when you grew up in California, this was textbook material. Textbook, yeah, that's what we learned about. So yeah. glad to see that at least it's being recognized and at least some sort of action is being taken on it. But there are ways to help, and you can find that in this story on our website at ktvb.com. Thanks, Joe. Mm -hmm.